That broken down theme song introduces another session of Are You a Genius? Presented for the American Armed Forces and their allies. And conducted by the master halfwit. <laughs> the genius who set record lows in every Army classification test. <laughs> the star of this show, Mel Blank. Who done that? Are you a genius? This is a simple game. All you need is a pencil and paper and a few right answers. I ask a question, then comes music for a half a minute or so. Then I give the correct answer. Each correct answer is worth a certain number of points. I'll give you the value of each question as we go along, and your genius rating is your total score. Everybody understand how to play the game? All root. In this session, we have six questions, all total to 100 points. All right now, kiddies, before we start school, old Professor Blank wants you to go up on the roof and bring my desk down here where it belongs. I said bring it down, not throw it down. Never mind, here's a good-sized splinter I can lean on. Meanwhile, you can get ready to lean into the first question. This is worth ten points. In football, what is meant by the expression triple threat man? For ten points, what is a triple threat man in football? (laughs) Well, I'm sure most of you knocked off a touchdown on that first one. If you did, you got ten points. A triple threat man in football is a player who can kick, run, and pass. So intercept ten points if you said a triple threat man is a player who can kick, run, and pass. Those of you who thought a triple threat man was a college player who got free board, room, and passed in all his studies get two demerits and an empty 3.2 barrel full of ham-like food, which shall be nameless because it's a commercial product. Ah, great stuff. Uh, But while we're on the subject of football, I wonder how many of you remember my career on the gridiron. I do, Mel. Me too, Mel. Yeah, I remember, Mel. Oh, nobody, huh? Well, then I'll tell you about the last game of my season for good old Colic Tech. We were playing our traditional rival, Paragoric Polly, and I was sitting on the bench huddled in my blanket, praying to get into the fray. Suddenly, the whistle blew. The coach called my name. I threw off my blanket and then... Did the coach send you in, Uncle Mel? No. He sent in the blanket. <laughs> and I'm sending you question two. It's worth 15 points to you if you can supply the last names of the following popular American artists. First, Charles Dana. And second, James Montgomery. For 15 points, what are the full names of these artists? Charles Dana... And James Montgomery. their names worth 15 points to you if you got them right. Charles Dana Gibson, James Montgomery Flagg. Take 15 points if you knew that the two artists' full names were Charles Dana Gibson and James Montgomery Flagg. Art certainly is wonderful. I can remember back in my salad days, my girl Mayonnaise and I, Mayonnaise, get that <laughs> English accent, I like I liked nothing better than to spend hours in a gallery. Till one day an usher caught us necking and we had to buy load seats. <laughs> But that's beside the point, isn't it? What point? If anybody finds a point to any of this stuff, wrap it in cotton and send it to me, will you? And by return mail, I'll ignore it. Now for question three. This thing is so silly. This one's worth 15 of those ever-loving points, so listen carefully. If brass is the alloy of copper and zinc, what is the alloy of copper and tin? For 15 points, if brass is the alloy of copper and zinc, what is the alloy of copper and and tin.
ready for the answer? Here it is. The alloy of copper and tin is bronze. Take 15 more points toward that genius score if you knew that the alloy of copper and tin is bronze. That reminds me, my girl gave me a good luck uh, piece uh, made of bronze. It's a beautiful little coin, too. Where did I put it again? Oh, oh, here it is, right here in my pocket. <laughs> Oops, dropped it. Oh, well, she can always knit me another one. She's a wonderful girl with a needle. You know, she worked in a hospital for a while, and in her spare time, she used to take two hypodermic needles and crochet fever charts. <laughs> All new material. <laughs> Ooh, I think I'm blowing my top. Wait a minute, I think I will. Where's the pop gun? Oh, uh, too far away. Blow your top, Mike. There you are. Better? Okay. And now, here's a question that all of you farm lads should get without being jabbed by a pitchfork. It carries 15 points with it. The question, not the pitchfork. Here it is. From what part of wheat does bran come from? The outside or the inside? 15 points. Where does bran come from? The outside or inside of wheat? Oh, McDonald had a farm. Ah! On his farm he had a cow. Ah! With a quack quack here and a quack quack there. Here a quack, there a quack, everywhere a quack quack. E-I-E-I-O. He had a jalopy, too. And here's the answer. Bran comes from the outer coat of the wheat grain. Take 15 points if you knew that bran comes from the outside of the wheat. Ah, bran is great stuff. You know, I like it for breakfast in the morning. If you put it, uh, if you put on enough sugar and cream, you can't even taste it. <laughs> oh, bother. Come in. Uh, how you to be, uh, how you to be, uh, uh, hello. Well, Porky Pig, what are you sticking your snout in here for? Well, I'm uh, going on the air. I've, I've got a sponsor and everything. Well, who's your sponsor? The Universal Uncurling Iron Company. Uncurling iron? Yeah, they, they, they straighten out pigtails. Oh, I get it. An uncurling iron to uncurl pigtails. Yeah, they, they, their slogan is, if, if, uh, from port to pointer in one treatment. Uh, they, we, we got an orchestra and everything. Whose orchestra? Uh, the Oscar Ox. Oscar Ox? Uh, yeah, but the, 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 the pigs are just crazy about them. You know, he's billed as, uh, is the uh, swing your hops with Oscar Rock. <laughs> and, uh, what are you gonna do on the program, Porky? Oh, well, uh, I'm the announcer, and, uh, you, uh, listen to this commercial. Attention, uh, uh Porky's everywhere. If your, uh, if, if, if tail is too curly, listen. Uh, do, do, do you want to get it straightened out? Uh, so, uh, send two dollars in acorns, or, uh, uh garbage, uh, to the Universal Uncurling Iron, uh, uh Company. 233 Oint Street, uh, 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 Gruntville, Ohio. And a word of warning. Once you get your uh, uh, tail straightened out, uh, uh, keep using your iron regularly. Otherwise, it uh, may, uh, may snap back and uh, scramble your bacon. Well, that's fine, Porky. Good luck on your new job. Yes, yeah, thanks, Andy. Yes, yeah, yeah, so long. Now, fellas, I'd be... Oh, oh, he left, yeah. Well, right here, you lucky G.I.s, comes the musical question. Joe the bartender plays the piano, and I play, you guess it, the cigar box fiddle. Uh-oh. I, I better get one of uh, Porky's uncurling irons for that string. Oh, no, no, I'll play it the hard way. Here's a question in three parts that's good for 30 points altogether, or 10 points for each part you answer correctly. All you have to do is name the type of building in each of the following song titles. Ready? Here's the first one. I'm sure you all knocked off ten points for that one. The song was... Small hotel, and the type of building referred to was naturally a hotel. So take ten points if you knew the building in that title was a, ho- a hotel. And now for a number two. All right, all 
All right, I'll stop. But take it easy. It could be worse, you know. I could be singing. <laughs> well, the building in that one was a shack. Because the name of the song is A Little Grass Shack in Kialakakuha, Hawaii. So take ten points if you said the building was a shack. Now, here's the last one in the musical question. <laughs> Okay, got it? Well, ten more points of yours if you knew that was shanty in old shanty town. Which proves, if you got it right, that there is a shanty clause. <laughs> Isn't that awful? Oh, pardon me while I kill myself. This is Mel Protoplasm Blank coming to you from the astral plane with another 15 point beauty. <laughs> this is a kind of tough one, so pay attention. A hedonist, that's H E D O N I S T, a hedonist is a Latin name for hangman, a person who devotes his life to fun and pleasure, or a fortune teller who predicts your future by the shape of your head. Once again, for 15 points. A hedonist is a Latin name for a hangman, a person who devotes his life to fun and pleasure, or a fortune teller who predicts your future by the shape of your head. Life is just a bowl of cherries. If you don't know the answer by now, well, you just don't know the answer by now. Fifteen points are yours if you knew that a hedonist is a person who devotes his life to fun and pleasure. And if you don't like it, don't knock it. Take fifteen points if you said a hedonist is a person who devotes his life to fun and pleasure. While you're adding up your tallies to see how close you came to the top genius score of a hundred points, let me remind you once again that if you think of a question that might fit into this fifteen-minute monstrosity... Will you mail it to Are You a Genius, Armed Forces Radio, Los Angeles, USA? You will? Thanks, fellas. And when you write, be sure and let us know if you heard this program by shortwave or over a local station. And thank again. And now this is Mel Blank, the old prawn course, saying so long and slipping you a confidential tip. Don't miss the next episode of Harriet de Peister in Iceland. The thrilling saga of a red-blooded blue blood who turns yellow in the white snow. <laughs> Are You a Genius is produced by the Armed Forces Radio Service. Uh -huh.